Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting June 24th, 2013. To start off, the NSA leaker Edward Snowden has been in the news all this week as well. However, for time's sake, I'm going to mostly skip the Edward Snowden updates. Do know he is apparently in Russia now, and the U.S. is actively trying to extradite him. On top of that, his latest leaks have to do with the U.S. government hacking Chinese telcos and with the U.S. government gathering bulk email records from U.S. citizens and foreign citizens as well. I'll be sure to share relevant Snowden updates in the future. I want to keep this week's video short, so rather than share all the details about the week's software updates, I'll just talk about the actual software packages you have to update if you run them. If you want any more details, be sure to check out the reference section in our blog post. In any case, if you use the WordPress framework, Ruby, Firefox, or one of many Cisco security products, such as the Cisco ASA Firewall or the Cisco Web Security Appliance, you need to go out and get patches to fix security vulnerabilities. Again, for more details, check out our reference section. In leak and hack news, this week Facebook disclosed a flaw in their Download Your Information tool. This is a tool you can use to download the information Facebook gathers about you. However, a flaw in this particular tool also shared the information or some private information of any of the friends you might be connected to on Facebook. Now, Facebook has since fixed this tool, and they say it's only leaked about 6 million uh, Facebook users' private details. And 6 million is just a fraction of the Facebook users out there. However, some researchers report this particular flaw is much wider than Facebook is actually admitting. They actually claim that it proves that Facebook is gathering shadow dossiers on even uh, users that aren't associated with Facebook. Essentially, what they found that is if you let Facebook connect to your other accounts like Gmail in order to find friends, Facebook also gathers private information from those other contacts at Gmail or whatever connection you've, you've allowed Facebook to connect to. And this private information was also included in this Download Your, your Information tool. This, of course, has caused the industry to debate whether or not Facebook should be gathering this private information from other sources like Gmail. In either case, it's further proof that you should limit and be careful what you share with social networks and cloud services, and also limit the connections you allow these cloud services to make to each other. In other hack news, Opera also disclosed that their network was compromised this week by external attackers. Now, they minimized the breach, saying that they found it and rectified it rather quickly. Nonetheless, they warned that the attacker was able to make off or steal a digital certificate associated with some of their old software. And the attacker has since used that digital certificate to sign some malware, making it seem more legitimate, as though it comes from Opera. The moral of the story is be careful when you're installing new software if its certificate says it comes from Opera. You want to make sure it really is a product that Opera does make. Next up, there's a lot of Korea-relating hacking news this week. It started with Op North Korea, an anonymous campaign that falls on the anniversary of the Korean War. And this is where Anonymous targets North Korea with many different attacks, and they, they do DDoS attacks and they deface websites. However, during this Anonymous North Korea attack, there were also reports of attacks against South Korea uh, websites as well from unknown sources. These attacks were after government sites and other related sites. And in one case, they even actually gained access to some data uh, specifying the private information of thousands of U.S. military troops that are located in South Korea. 
Now, Symantec during this time has actually said that many of these South Korean attacks uh, used malware and techniques that were related to a group they called the Dark Soul Gang. And this is a group that's been attacking uh, South Korea over the past four years and is known for uh, a wiper malware that can also delete hard drives on some South Korean computers. In any case, uh, Korea was a big focus for cyber attacks this week, both simple attacks from anonymous and uh, alleged nation state or state sponsored attacks. In either case, whether you live in North or South Korea, you should probably invest in some good cybersecurity solutions. Next, let's move on to what I think is the biggest security news this week, which is the leaking of the Carburp botnet creation kit. If you haven't heard of Carburp, it's a botnet creation kit that's designed to, to create a, a banking botnet. Essentially, people, criminals that buy it, can create their own botnet, which is designed to steal the banking credentials of their victims. Now, this uh, particular kit has been used in the underground for, for years and has been sold on the underground market market only as a toolkit, not as actual source code. And it sold for quite a, a pretty penny, around $50,000. Well, early in the week, the authors of Carberg actually talked about selling the source code for the kit, which is kind of uh, a weird and new. It means that they might be moving on to new malware kits, but they're willing to give out the source code to allow other malware authors to maybe improve the kit and change it. In any case, while a particular forum was trying to sell this particular source code, it ended up getting leaked to other forums. And long story short, it's now even available to find by any hobbyist who knows where to search. Now, this is pretty big news in the security uh, community because whenever source code specifically for malware kits leaks, it actually generates a whole new strain of new variants because now other bad guys can build upon this and can use the source code in some of the techniques in their own malware as well. On top of that, the particular archive that leaked is not just Carburp. This archive is a big 1.8 gigabyte archive that contains all kinds of other interesting samples as well, including the Zeus source code, the Citadel source code, a source code for a very advanced bootloader that Carburp malware tended to use so that it could install in a master boot record, and even something called a Packer encryptor, something called Mystic Compression. A Packer encryptor is a special tool bad guys use to make their malware look different to signature-based antivirus products. So there's a lot of very juicy uh, and uh, dangerous code in this particular leak that I think is unfortunately going to result in a lot of new bad malware. Now the good news is the security guys also have access to these tools too, so we can create protection techniques as well. So a very interesting new malware leak that I think will have security researchers busy analyzing for quite a while. So let me end on a fun note with a few stories for uh, my fellow gamers out there. The first story is if you're a World of Warcraft player, you need to worry about another big gold heist. In this case, attackers leveraged flaws in the auction house, the, the web-based and mobile-based auction house World of Warcraft users uh, use to, to sell World of Warcraft goods. This flaw allowed the attackers to steal millions in WoW gold. Now the good news is, is if they stole the gold from you, Blizzard may compensate you. The bad news is whenever this happens, it tends to deflate the World of Warcraft gold market. Blizzard has since fixed the flaw, so there's nothing you need to do to protect yourself. However, it's important to note people that used World of Warcraft's two-factor authentication mechanism were not vulnerable to this particular attack. So it's a great example of why you really ought to enable two-factor authentication when it's available. The second fun story I want to share is about an upcoming uh, new anticipated game called Watch Dogs. If you're a gamer, you've probably heard of Watch Dogs. This game will probably come out near the end of the year, and it kind of highlights this dystopian cyber future uh, where you have guys that can hack the grid and take over traffic lights and other people's mobile phones and things like that. So the creators of Watchdog, Ubisoft, created this interesting new site called wearedata.watchdogs.com. And if you go to this particular site, it actually leverages the publicly available uh, data today, uh, data from Facebook and the cloud and Google Maps and all kinds of resources out there to really illustrate how much private information people have about each other on a very real-time basis. It kind of illustrates how 
some of the hacking concepts that they're going to show in their, their game can be based on some of the reality we see today in, in cybersecurity and in the online world. So I just find it fascinating. I recommend you check out this We Are Data site because it really opens your eyes to some of the privacy implications with all the data we're sharing with the world. So that's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it interesting and useful. As always, be sure to check out the WatchGuard Security Center blog where you can find regular security stories. And you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Or follow my company WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.